Hello, Shalom Shalom. How are you doing? I hope everything is going well with you today. As you see, I'm out here. I'm at the beach doing a little workout in this nice little workout area. These little items here, you know, people come out, do the little workout. You know, it's real nice. We're going into Yom Kippur. Let me see this. It's about two o'clock, five minutes to two. And uh, catching that breeze. I hope it's not too windy for you. And uh, <sighs> decided to come out here and relax. Get a little light workout in. Turn the camera on so you can see the area that I'm living in out here in Ashkelon, Israel. You know? Yom Kippur comes in tonight at sundown. Yom Kippur. And, um, Later on tonight, a lot of people are going to be out walking around the streets dressed in all white. And Yom Kippur, you do not drive any vehicles. Absolutely nothing happened in this country. The only thing is active is the military police, security situations like that. But tonight, all day tomorrow, until tomorrow sunset, no vehicles will be on the road. I remember one year uh, out of Yom Kippur, the evening before Yom Kippur, I had traveled up to Tel Aviv to see some friends before the Yom Kippur come in. And I messed around and miscalculated the time. And when I got back here to Ashkelon, the people was already out in the street walking. And I was the only car. And do you know them people hollered and screamed and were shaking their fists at me? Because it's super dangerous because that's when they bring the children out and the toys and everybody just sit in the middle of the street. They just walk in the middle of the street. You know, because that's something you can't do because cars are always moving. So for me to be out there on the road was real dangerous because they had the children out and the little bitty children. I mean, like the children so small, you know how they had old bicycle with no pedals but they 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 just sit and move ride with their feet you know what I'm saying so they had those children super small and you out there in a car no man I was so embarrassed even though they didn't know me I didn't know them I just felt embarrassed man to be out there because you know you don't do that and they looking at me like the hell is wrong with this guy but I'm rolling by slow and the people saw me everybody you know they they hollered out to let other people know a uh, car is coming. And they was like, what? People looked around like, what the hell? Whew. Never do that again. Never, never, never. That was embarrassing. But anyway, it's going to be quiet over here. And this is my view every day. It's a beautiful Mediterranean Sea. I come out, it's peaceful, tranquil. You understand? Today I didn't ride my car. I, I came out on my bike, my e-bike. You know, cause those those big fat tires. Now where I live at, we have we have a bike room that's 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 special for bikes. So it's a lot of bikes, and I got this e-bike, and then I got a um, a mountain bike. 
So I bring this out like once or twice a month and ride it and make sure the tires stay pumped up and you know, drain the battery and charge it back up. It's a Cobra, it's nice and strong, steady, you know, so, so I needed to go out and, and uh, pick up a package someone shipped me. So instead of driving my car, I just went out on my bike cause the place was like, yeah, maybe a half mile from the house. Then the weather is excellent. It's not too hot, not too cold, absolutely beautiful. And as you can see, not a cloud in the sky. Not a cloud in the sky. Wind blowing. That look like a bird up there. I wonder is that a bird? It looked like one. Yeah, that's gotta be. Don't look like anything tethered to a string. That a bird? Look like a bird up there. Oh, gone, huh? Yeah. Because the wind coming off the water so strong. Hold on, let's go see. Because the wind coming off the water so strong. Bird don't have a flap his wing. All he got to do is just open his wing. Let me see. Ah, it's a kite. Okay. Ah, somebody got a kite. All right. And it was a shadow shining on the top of the thing. That's why I couldn't see. It's not a bird. It's a kite. All right. Solved that mystery, huh? <laughs> she come out with her coffee cup. Sip a little coffee, walk around, enjoy the view. And see, this is what I was trying to say to my people. In America, man, you see that white woman? She walk up, did she go carrying on me? No, she looked, went on about her business. But you all know that them daggone Karens would have caused the issue. A uh, black man over here in the exercise facility, see all by myself, public facilities, everybody can use it and a Karen show up and muck up the whole day. But the white woman, she looks on me, she, brother over there talking whatever with his cell phone, she stood at that moment, sipped her coffee, and look at that, she strolled on down that way. Huh, she ain't bothering me. There's a sister sitting on the grass chilling. Look like she might be taking, yeah, she's sitting there eating her food. Look like the Ethiopian sister. Because they wear those kind of hats. You probably can't see it from that distance, but, you know. Anywho, yeah. Now, y'all saw that. And so this is what I'm trying to tell y'all, man. You over there struggling with all that, you know, Western aggression, you know, anger. And still trying to vote and protest and beg them heathens to like you and accept you. Listen, after 400 years, it's something some supposed to tell you. The people don't give a flying flip about us. You understand? Know and like I'm sitting over here, these two dudes, they coming up from the beach. Watch this, watch, this. I'm gonna try some. Coxamere. All right. You know, see? Wave them. Coxamere means happy holiday. Coxamere, okay. So, you know, I'm just trying to show you a little snippet of what I go through based every day, you know? But, you know, my people, they still feel America is the greatest country in the world. It's the only place to live. Ain't no other country like this. Okay, say to keep on doing that. Y'all tough, keep fighting. You know, I, I mentioned on another video about, you know, uh, you all brothers and sisters leaving and just, hey, even if you just don't decide, all right, I'm out, 
uh, uh, for a fact-finding mission. You know, you go out to another country just to get your facts, to prove me. Okay, so you got the whole world. You understand? You ain't got to just be stuck there in America taking all that bullshit from them Karens and Kens and the police and the, the legal system, the unjust legal system. You know, I mean, I saw this video, man, there'd just be so many of them that they'd be coming up with these white people bearing down on my people. Here this couple, um, the, the brother, I think she might have been a Hispanic sister, a couple of children, they was out enjoying themselves. One white woman walk up and just, whatever reason, felt like she had the power to call the police because these blacks and Hispanics was out there. Yeah, what? Come on now, seriously? And y'all just saw, I guess that was just probably the whole, the, the spirit. You know, the white woman walks up by herself, ain't got no team. I ain't see her coming, because when I walked over there to see what was that, a bird or whatever, I looked around, here she comes stro strolling in my direction with her coffee cup. You understand? She ain't start nothing. But I ain't never had to worry about nothing like that. You know what I'm saying? Now, I done lived, I done told you, I done lived in Nigeria, Liberia, Benin, Togo, Ghana, Ethiopia. And, you know, everybody go to Egypt, visit, you know, the pyramid. Canada. And I spent some time, believe it or not, in Moscow. You know, some guys over here, I worked with Alex, you know, Dude named uh, Slavic, right? He's Russian cats. Boris, you know, it's always going to be an Alex and a Boris in the jump. You know what I'm saying? And so, yeah, I took a jump over there with him, hung out with him, had a ball. You know, I mean, had a ball. These boys, see, that was the time where I still was drinking beer. You know, I quit drinking beer like maybe a year ago, I think. In, in a year, over a year, I may have had two brews, you know, maybe two. See, here's some Ethiopian brothers coming out. They got their food. They're going to sit out there and chill, have them a good time. The brothers, you know, may, they look like they may go jump in the water. And uh, a couple of the Israelis cat, they're probably going to go down there do a little talking and eating and having a good time, enjoying themselves. Yay. Okay, so it's Israel. All right, I get it. I know the international reputation and most of that stuff is, is true. They doing what they doing right down there. I done showed you that before. You way down there in the distance are those smokestacks. Right on the other side of them is Gaza. That's where the Palestinians are all down there. But anyway, I'm just talking to my brothers and sisters, African-American brothers and sisters that's in America struggling with them folks, white people and the police and systematic, systemic racism against you. Now, I'm not saying it's not here. I'm not saying it's not here. I'm just saying that it's not as bold in, in your face like over there, okay? Just like you saw the white woman come, she chill. Hey, she ain't worried about nothing. The brothers over there, ain't nobody running and screaming and calling the police. That's what I'm talking about. Why? Because crime? What is crime? I mean, first of all, the area where I'm living at, you see our house, you see, you see how we live. There's two, two, three million dollar cribs over there. You know what I'm saying? Now, another verification. All right, I'll show you. There's another white woman walking. I'm just going to be here. She's going on by her business. Going on down to the beach. Get in the water. She got a bag, you know, and they carry the bags like that. They going on to the beach to enjoy themselves. Right? She got a cell phone, but I guarantee you she ain't calling the police on the brother. Anyway, y'all got to take note now. Nubian King, brother over here chilling, man. 
Ain't nobody worried about me. See, she going on to the beach, get down there in the water, enjoy herself. And I'm going to go to each one of these machines. I just did this shoulder. I'm going to go to this next one here. That'll be two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That'll be good for me. And um, I'm feeling just excellent, wonderful, because those of you all that's been keeping up with me, you know I was in a near-death head-on collision uh, over seven years ago. And uh, both my ankle was messed up, my knees, my right hip ligaments, the ligaments around the, the bone, the socket, the hips, they was almost ripped from the bone. So severely damaged that my back had to compensate and I was in severe pain for eight months. Couldn't even walk, couldn't make it to the toilet. Didn't want to eat cause I didn't want to have uh, elimination. Cause going to the toilet was a major ordeal. You hear me? Didn't want to drink much water because I had to relieve myself in one of those, you know, hospital bottles. And my wife had to help me. And I didn't want to put all that on her. So I was eight months total misery, trying not to be too much of a burden on my wife, you know, at the time. And so I dealt with that. And I haven't been able to walk, you know, for seven, eight years. Now I'm walking, I'm back to work, yes, but my walk haven't came back like it, it, it was, you know, like you can walk and it don't bother you, you just stroll, nothing hurt, you just strolling. See, that's she is, she way down there. Just put a bag down, she finna chill, probably walk out there in the water and enjoy herself. She ain't worried about the brother. Okay, and I keep driving that point to you all cause a lot of you brothers and sisters over there, black folk, however you want to call yourself, you know, y'all really been tricked to think that America is the only place and you, you don't need to go nowhere else because they'll take your passport and you can't come back. And then, you know, you all make so many stupid excuses, man. Oh, well, you know, Israel, that's occupied land. Where the hell you think America is? You know, y'all can say, can say some wacky stuff. Like, I hear the sisters on these videos talking about brothers leaving America going overseas to get a wife. Now here's the sisters telling the brothers about they shouldn't do that because when you get over there, you gon' they gonna want you to pay for them and pay for their whole family and take care of the whole family and, and buy them stuff and all this kind of stuff. And they be sisters that have never left the city that they born in in America. Hell, I mean born and raised in Atlanta, Georgia, and you ain't even been to Florida. Born and raised in Atlanta, Georgia, and you ain't never been to South Carolina. Born and raised in Atlanta, Georgia, and you ain't even been to Tennessee. Born and raised in Atlanta, Georgia, you ain't been to Alabama, but you're going to tell the brothers about what women in another country on the other side of the world, how they are. And you ain't even been out of the state of Georgia. You see how stupid that is? And now here's a brother, me, that done travel the world, different countries, experience different cultures, food, languages, the whole thing. And I can tell you from experience, not just cause I'm mad at the sisters or some dumb stuff. You know, like some of these sisters, they just mad at the brother. You know, they walking around, they got one, two, three babies in tow. Ain't no man with them for, for, for whatever reason. I don't know, you know. You can just about guess, but I don't know. You know, they single. They got the babies on their own, the house, the bills, and they mad. And they talking smack about brothers. And then I heard this sister the other day, she talking about, yeah, y'all running from America cause y'all don't want to put up with us. Put up with you, what? What the hell is you talking? Why do the brothers have to put up with you? The reason why is because they want to do whatever the hell they want to do, however they want to do it, when, and don't make no difference. And they don't want you to say dilly squat about it. So that's why they want you to put up with that stuff that they doing that you may not like as a man. And they don't care. They don't care. You know what I'm saying? That's the way they are. That's the way they are. And then they're going to try to shine brothers that's getting up, getting the hell out of there that don't want to put up with that boss 
bitch attitude. And from what I was always told, a bitch is actually a female dog in heat. You know what I'm saying? But our sisters are proud to be called themselves, I'm a boss bitch, I'm a bad bitch. Why? Because some rich married woman made a song about being a boss bitch with a good rhythm, a good groove, good mood music, and it hypnotized our sisters and now they boss bitches. And the brothers gotta bow down or the brothers gotta prove themselves to the boss bitch. You know what I'm saying? Cause I make my own money. I pay my own way. You know what I'm saying? So when the brothers say, what do you bring to the table? Well, I got me career, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm making six figures. I make $130,000 a year. You know, I pay for my own house. I pay for my own car. You understand? You know, I buy my own food. I can take myself out. And so the brother's standing there waiting like, well, damn, you don't need a man. You know what I'm saying? Because everything you just laid on the table, that's what the man's supposed to do. Bring the money, pay the bill, and take care of you. So, hell, I guess you done bought you a big deal, though, too, with your six figures. Because you damn sure don't need a man. You know what I'm saying? But feminine women, do you know what feminine women are? Not in America. Because they boss bitches. And I'm just talking to you, sisters. You get mad as you want. I don't care. I ain't got to put up with you. And no man really do. And they are. They turning their backs on you. They walking away from you. Leaving you right there in the dust with your boss bitch attitude. In your house, in your car. And all your other materialism. And you can screw that damn couch you got up in your house for as we concerned. Because why? Man, we done got out of that. You all don't even realize how many good brothers that left up out of America to leave you boss bitches there to keep working your jobs and paying for your shit and being a boss bitch. While brothers is leaving America looking for more traditional women that are feminine, don't mind cooking, don't mind taking care of the house, don't mind being a wife, a housewife. Cause boss bitches can't be housewives. Cause first of all, you don't know how to cook. That's the first thing. You don't know how to cook. I mean, the boss bitch, she need a recipe for ice. Because she's a boss bitch. But she know how to be a boss bitch now. And she got all the skills and understanding and knowledge to tell other sisters what they need to do about a man. Single as hell. But don't want you to say nothing. Especially you're a black man. Have absolutely no respect for the brother. None whatsoever. Not a zilch. Don't want to hear it. Don't want to hear it. So they being left alone. Plenty of brothers done hit Thailand, the Philippines, uh, uh, what's the other one? Um, South America, Brazil. You know what I'm saying? They even popping up in St. Petersburg, Russia. While y'all over there le uh, believing all them lies. CNN talking about you got brothers walking around St. Petersburg, Russia, Moscow, Russia. Uh, While y'all sitting up believing all them lies, CNN soaking in your mind, you got brothers everywhere. You know the country, Latvia? Latvia. You don't know where that's at. Go get the damn map and look up Latvia. You got black folks in Latvia. Not many, but you got brothers over there. With those Eastern European women that don't know nothing about a boss bitch, but what they see on the YouTube, masculine, hard, feminine, non-feminine black boss bitches in America. And these women is like, damn, why they like that? Oh, don't talk about the Filipino now. They way out. They got that real hair that y'all got to buy because you don't even understand how to grow your hair no more. Because ain't nobody tell you nothing. But America the greatest country in the world. And then the sisters is making such a bad reputation for themselves, the white men don't even want it. Cause they don't want to put up with that stuff. You're too damn hard. You know what I'm saying? You're too hard. You ain't feminine. Man, you know, when you get around a real beautiful feminine woman, it just, man, it just mesmerize you. Huh? Cause you so used to the boss bitch. They done been played. I don't even know if the sisters now even know how to be a nice feminine woman. Because everybody's so hard, you know? And then, on the other hand, 
It's that American culture, that violent, mean, hellish, devilish American culture that these women are functioning in, these brothers are functioning in, and don't even understand how the daggone system is programmed against you. Don't even understand. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and a brother like me that's been around, been out, been different places, understand, I can't even tell you nothing because you don't want to hear nothing. You know? So, you know, to each his own, man. Stay there and keep getting your ass whooped. You understand? Oh, and about that going to Africa, I know exactly where y'all going. And guess where I'm going? Exactly where y'all not. Because I see when I'm in Africa, I see how you black people carry yourself. Too many of y'all come to Africa with that American mindset and you don't even know how a lot of the African call y'all Yankees. Yeah. Why? Because too many of you black folk pop up in Africa with this, with this arrogant ass, I'm American, I'm from America attitude. And you're pissing the African brothers and sisters off. They don't even want your ass that no more. But can't nobody tell you nothing. Because you're a boss bitch. You understand? Know Keep on being that. Now you're in your 40s. And now you're in your 40s. Who wants you? <laughs> no, no, y'all mad with me. You don't want to hear that. You know? Because you want the brother to have six figures, a uh, six foot one, a six pack, a 12 inch dick, right? A big old house. Screw y'all night. Spend all the money on you, get your nails done, get your weave done, buy your makeup, do everything for you. And then when the brother asks you, what do you have to bring to the relationship? What are you going to do? What do you got to bring to the table? You know what she used to say? What shit? The table? I am the table. Uh-huh. You're at the table. Okay. All right. Then, then I'm just going to ask you one, one question. It's specifically, what is it that is on your table? that you can present to the relationship. Nigga, why you got to ask so many, you know, really ain't got nothing to say. But you were listening the other day to the Filipino girl, and the first thing she said, she said, well, we're feminine because they see how you're acting. These other girls, and they using your stupidness against you. So they watching your boss bitches, and they seeing them beautiful black men jump off the plane, and they know what kind of women those beautiful black men jumping off the plane have had to deal with in America? That, that, that modern American boss bitch attitude. So them girls show up feminine with that long hair and them smile and the brothers just get wiped away because it's been like you ain't seen no feminine woman. Now I'm going to tell you this and then I'm going to go because I know you probably done stop listening anyway. In the Philippines. How can I tell you so much? My girl is from Elo Elo. Oh, y'all didn't know that. Oh, you think, see, y'all think I'd just be running my mouth? Huh? I get 99% of the stuff correct, but I have other people listening to me, and if I make mistakes, they'll hit me up and say, okay, you gotta correct that because uh, uh, Vladimir Volensky of Ukraine, he didn't sign the papers to, to be a part of NATO, he actually signed the application, which they've already said that ain't gonna happen because the country is, it was a lot of different major points about the country that they can't. See, I made a mistake. I thought that was the, the, uh, the paperwork bringing them into. Now, okay, so one of my listeners corrected me on that and I just corrected you. It wasn't the application to be uh, saying that they are part of uh, NATO. It was an application request. And it went nowhere because people said, nope. So anyway, the Philippines. So the Filipino women, they looking at you and they watching you. Now, my girl, I told you, she's from Iloilo. All right. And I know y'all probably like, what? The Nubian king? Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. Absolutely. Yep. The Nubian king is dating a sister that is not a part of the... Uh, African Edenic family. And you didn't even know that. 
five years. Y'all listening to me and you thinking like, wow, you know, yeah. So that's to say, yeah, you can date outside of the race and still be pro for your family. Because when you get these particular women that they with you, they loyal, they support you, they will go anywhere with you. My girl told me last week we was talking about Africa. She said, baby, I always wanted to go to Africa. I, I want to go. I, wherever you go, I want to go. That's it. And just like the girl P, she's another Filipino girl, got a big YouTube channel. And she's talking a lot of things, man. That girl, is she, she, she's sharp. Because why? It's so many brothers that's in the Philippines, married to these Filipino women, that have shared their experience, that they sharp. Now, they know exactly what is going on with the African-American male-female relationship that when these brothers show up in uh, the Philippines, man, and women be like, I got you, baby, come on over here. You know, brothers cooking. My girl cooked this uh, stuff, tomatoes, onion, and rice. Man, I told her one day, I said, sweetheart, you know what? Uh, we can't eat this no more. I mean, it is awfully, unbelievably delicious. So every day I come in from work, shh, man, please. So I don't even want to tell y'all about it. Hey, listen, listen. Um, so I'm going to tell you this about the Philippines. They, they have this thing uh, like a singles mixer. Now, I, I watch uh, the Philip Scott, right? Philip Scott, audio experience. I watch him, Philip Scott, out of Texas. And he show a lot of videos of a mad, mean, boss bitch sister going in on brothers all the time. And then he showed videos of sisters crying, talking about they tired of being alone. They really, really want a man. Then he showed videos of white women talking about they went out and no man approached them. And he, he explained to her why. He said, wait a minute, y'all got the doggone uh, Me Too movement, right? Y'all got all that kicking. And then men have lost their jobs for just speaking to you in the office. And so now you want to cry and complain about ain't no man approaching you. Well, you done got men fired off their job for just speaking to you. So you done put the men in a position where, oh, no, go, go ahead on. No, we had nothing to do with you. And now, because you said you don't want nobody to talk to you, he's talking to you. What are you doing speaking to me? You, you get back over there. Then now you got the men over there and ain't nobody saying nothing to you. Right? Then you talking about the marriage. Man, please, ain't nobody trying to do that. Not in America. You work like hell all your life and you get all your little goods. You marry somebody and then she nut up on you and you wind up going to a divorce. She take down everything with no remorse. No remorse. So who want to do that? Anyway, let me tell you this, this event. All right, Philip Scott showed this event. It was a, a singers, singles, mixer and in the beginning they said no men showed up all black girls showed up and no brothers and that caught my attention i'm like shazam is it that bad and so they showed the video of all sisters sitting at the table by themselves maybe one or two sisters sitting together talking but it was like no brothers out there oh they went in hard on that but what happened the brothers came a little later all right, not, not a lot, not as many as the sister, but they did show up. So you gotta, you know, you gotta say that. Can't just make it like, oh, no brother can't. The brothers did come, but later on, much later. But not that many. All right, but it was kind of embarrassing, all them sisters out there in the beginning and no brothers. So whatever happened, whatever, I don't, you know, they had it. Did somebody get relationship out of that? I don't know. Now, I'm gonna tell you about this experience down in the Philippines. They did the same thing in the Philippines. They had a singles uh, mixer, uh, singles night in the hotel, the major hotel, but this happened in Manila, you know, the, the main city up there. A lot of brothers up there. My girl's from uh, Iloilo, way down south, you know, much, much south. You got Manila up north, and where she's from, down south. And all this is islands out there. Some of these places you can't get to unless you take a boat over there or something, maybe a helicopter. But anyway, it's beautiful. I mean, just woof. 
Like, you don't want to leave. No, 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 no. So, you know, yesterday, me and her, we discussed getting some land, building a house and everything. And, you know, nice house is like six, seven thousand dollars. You want to you want to really go big, get ten, fifteen thousand dollars. You living in a mansion. But anyway, they had a singles mission at the hotel up in Manila. So uh, the Filipinos girls, they would, you know, get dressed and they dresses and they do makeup and everything real simple. Ain't nothing, you know, really, you know, swagged out. A lot of them dresses didn't call for two dollars, one dollar and three dollars. That's how simple they are. And they was just as happy as they could be because they going somewhere to meet them a man. But but dig this. This is y'all don't know. The number one man they really was looking to meet was a black man from America. Ah, <laughs> uh, boy. <laughs> Y'all think I'm lying, though. I know you do. I don't care. So anyway, the, the ballroom is downstairs in the hotel. You catch the elevator, go down one floor. It's a pretty big elevator, so like 10, 12 brothers can fit up in there. So the, the Filipino girls, they got there maybe 20 minutes, 30 minutes early. So they all sitting at the table. When it was time for it to start, they all got up and went and stood around the elevator door. And this, this, was, this was really, really special. When that door opened, it was filled with brothers. They all dressed nice, groomed up, cause they coming to meet somebody. And this night was to meet your wife. That was the, the it was a singles night, but meet your wife. So the Filipino girls came with intention to meet a man to marry, and the brothers came with an intention to meet a Filipino to marry. So the whole objective was to end up getting married. Now this is how they did it. When the elevator doors opened, the Filipino girl was standing there, the brothers walk off, and everybody just kind of looked at each other. And so when the girl saw a brother that she liked, she just walked up to him, took his hand, introduced herself, and they chatted up a minute or two. Then they went and sat down. And when everybody had met somebody, they sitting down at the dinner table. Then the dinner was served. And they ate dinner. And everybody left with somebody. That was the singles mixer in the Philippines. And the objective was to meet somebody to get married. That was the, like when they wrote the, um, the flyer, the advertisement. Singles night. Hotel Iloilo. Meet with an ejection, get married. That's that's where it wrote up. So you didn't go there just like, okay, I'm no. That girl came to get with you to be your wife. That's why she came. She ain't come up there just to meet you, the boyfriend, you screw, have a few babies, and you bounce.